Welcome again to the channel Gateway to IT and today we are going to discuss about boundaries. So we have a concept in SECM boundaries and boundary groups. So let's discuss first what are boundaries. So as per Microsoft boundaries are the defined network locations on the intranet where we want to manage our devices. Let's understand this within help of an example. Let's say there is a company and which has two locations. One is in India, another one is in Denver. Now I want my India clients to be managed with my resource, which is SCCM IND01, which, uh, which has uh, roles installed, distribution point, management point, software update point, or any other role as well. So if I want my India client to get managed with this particular site system, then I will gonna create a boundary for that. And the reason we need boundary for it is because let's say I do not have any boundary created for any of these sites. And uh, now there is a possibility that machine will not get any kind of content or any kind of location. So my machine will not be able to communicate to any distribution point, any management point, any software update point. Or if there is a boundary created which is not configured properly, there could be a possibility that my, my India client will go over the van which will utilize a higher bandwidth and go to the Denver network and then utilize this particular uh, SECM uh, site system. So which is SECM hyphen DEN01. So in order to get rid of those kind of issues where the high utilization or the performance issues, because obviously if the client from India site is going over the van to the Denver site to download the content, it will take time to download the content and also utilize the higher bandwidth. So to avoid those kind of issues, we create the boundaries. Now let's discuss why do we need boundaries. So one I've already explained in the example, the resource assignment, like a machine should not go to the, uh, go to a different location or a different resource, which is not defined in the boundary group for, because it, it can create a high ba bandwidth utilization or it can create an issue. Like if you're not defining the boundaries, it will not be able to get any kind of resources, like any management point, distribution point or anything. So that is the reason why need, why we need the boundaries. And the second thing is the site assignment. Let's say we have multiple sites and we want India site to be managed with IND site and US site to be managed with US site, then we can define that site assignment as well in the bound uh, in the boundary group. But this, uh, this is the reason why we need boundaries to be defined. Now let's discuss the type of boundaries. The first boundary is IP subnet. Then this boundary is creates on the basis of subnet. Let's do a lab for this and let's create a boundary based on the subnet. So in order to create the boundary, we have to go to the administration tab and then go to the boundaries. Under boundaries, we have to create a boundary. And let's say if I want to create a boundary for Delhi. So now I have to select the type. So I can select IP subnet type here. And then I can select, let's say my, my subnet is 192.168.0 or .1.0. That will be my subnet. And then my subnet mask will be 255. 255.255.0 and this is my subnet ID which it will be automatically calculated. So that's how you can uh, define a boundary. You can also add a boundary to a boundary group from here. But right now we are not doing it. We are just creating the boundary for an example. Now this is my boundary which got created on the basis of subnet. So if you see the boundary type is IP subnet and description. Now let's discuss the second type of boundaries, which is Active Directory site name. So that's a type of boundary. And uh, in order to create that, uh, let's let's go back to the SCCM server. So in order to create the boundary, first we have to go to administration, then we have to go to boundaries, right click create boundary and under create boundary, let's say you're giving a description. I want to create this for my Denver site. So DEN, then after that, I want to choose my Active Directory site because type has to be Active Directory sites. And then after that, I have to browse. Now, in order to create the boundary on the basis of Active Directory site, we have to make sure that the site is created in Active Directory. So that has to be checked on the Active Directory, whether it is created or not. 
if it is not created then you will not be able to create the site on the uh, i mean you will not be able to create the boundary on the basis of active directory site so for me i have already created it like for denver site so i'll click okay and then i'll hit apply and then okay now if we see this active directory site boundary has been created so that's how you can create an active directory site boundary now let's discuss what is ipv6 prefix boundary so ipv6 prefix boundary will be only created if you have ipv6 enabled in your environment so let's now let's see how to create the ipv6 boundary so in order to create a uh, ipv6 prefix boundary first we have to go to administration then we have to go to boundaries right click create boundary and then from the type i have to select ipv6 prefix now i have to provide the prefix here from the ipv6 i'm just taking an example right now because i do not have an ip ipv6 configured in my environment but that's the address uh, you can you can give this is just an example and then you can name it as a nimi site let's say I'm, I'm just naming it as in delhi so that's how you have to create the ipv6 prefix so this a uh, particular uh, type of boundary will, will be used only by the environment with who has ipv6 enabled in their environment now the next type is ip address range so with the name itself we can understand that uh, the boundary group which creates on the basis of the ip address range is this type so let's try to create this in in our lab so in order to create the boundary group we have to go to administration then we have to go to boundaries and then then we have to create boundary now in that we have to define let's say any any name we can give here i can give india then i can go to ip address range let's say if i wanted to uh, specify ip address range starting from 192.168.1.100 till 192.168.1.255 so this is something what i want to specify so on the basis of this i can create it and that's how we create the ip range boundary. the last uh, type of boundary is vpn so vpn boundary is introduced in the accm version 2006 and this boundary is basically for the machines which are connected over the VPN and with the help of uh, network information and uh, the network adapter information, we can create this uh, boundary. So let's create the VPN boundary. So in order to create the VPN boundary, we have to go to administration, go to boundaries, right click on boundary, create boundary. And then we have to select the type VPN. Under VPN, you can name it as an like VPN, whatever you want. Now there are few options like auto detect VPN, connection name, connection description. With the help of auto detect VPN, configuration manager detects any VPN solution that uses the point to point tunneling or we can say PPTP. So if, if that is uh, that is configured or uh, in your environment, then it will automatically detect that. If that is not the case, then you have to specify the name of a connection name which is which is configured on the vpn or the connection description so these are the three uh, options on by by which you can create your vpn boundary for now i'm only gonna select auto detect and i'm gonna say apply and okay and that's how you have to create the vpn boundary so now let's discuss what is boundary group as per microsoft boundary groups are the logical groups of boundaries a hierarchy can include any number of boundary group. Each boundary group can contain any combination of the boundary types. When I say boundary types, it can be like IP ranges, VPN, IPv6 prefix or uh, AD sites boundaries. So again, in, if, if we talk in a simple word, the combination of the boundaries is called boundary groups. Now let's discuss why do we need boundary group. So we need boundary group to allocate the resources. Now let's say if I want my India site to communicate only with SCCM IND01 server. Now like for any kind of policies, any content or the software updates. So if we wanted to do that, for that we have to create a boundary group and we have to add a India boundary to that boundary group as well as the resource or the reference SCCM IND01 
to that boundary group in the same way let's say if i want to create it for denver then uh, secm den01 uh, is my resource and i wanted that resource for my denver site then uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create a boundary group and on the basis of site or on the basis of subnets then i will going to add all my i mean i'm going to add this particular uh, site system in the reference or in the resource section i mean we say it as in reference section and then from there uh, the client can uh, communicate only to the denver site so now in this if we create the boundary groups now the client will not go over the wan to get the content now, not even india client will go to denver and denver client will not come uh, to india for the content or for any kind of policy so now let's create boundary group to understand it in a better way so in order to create boundary group first we have to go to administration and then we have to go to boundary groups now you can right click and create a boundary group but before that let understand what is default site boundary group so this default site boundary group will create by default as soon as you installed a ccm site and the use of this default site boundary group is let's say you have a client and or or a specific um, set of clients or a ip range or ip subnet or a site which is not specified in any of the boundary groups and it's not getting content from anywhere so by default that client will be fall back after 120 minutes so that's a by default time after 120 minutes that client will be uh, redirected to the default site boundary group if it is not able to find any boundary group relevant boundary groups so now let's create a boundary group so in order to create a boundary group we have to right click on the boundary groups and create a boundary group and then you can name it whatever you want so for now i'm going to name it as an ind so my india boundary group before we create this boundary group we should know that we, there are two types of boundary group which we have to create and recommended by microsoft so the first type is site assignment boundary group site assignment boundary group we use because of overlapping of the boundary groups so that's why microsoft recommends that uh, we create the separate boundary group for the site assignment and the resource assignment so that's the reason we uh, we create the site assignment separately and in the site assignment we add all the boundaries which we want to manage from a particular site let's say uh, i'm going to i have added all the india site here and then i'm going to add this uh, i'm going to check this option for the site assignment and then i'm going to hit apply and okay so that's how you have to create the site assignment boundary group now if i want to create a boundary group for my content or for my any management point distribution point software update point then in that case i'm going to create an other another one ind dash i can say resource and i'm going to add my india site again and i'm going to go to reference i'm not going to check this option here right now because i've already created uh, the site assignment uh, boundary group there now here i'm going to select my resource so currently i only have one resource so i'm only going to uh, select this one and this will be my resource for my india client where my india client will communicate to this particular site uh, this particular site system or site server for the management point distribution point state migration point or the software update point so that's how it it works so now you have to hit apply and then okay so that's how you have to create the boundary group for the resource and the site assignment now there is one more concept under boundary groups uh which is for the fallback so if i create one more boundary group let's say for denver and i'm going to do do it for resource and then i'm going to add my denver site here apply i don't have any sites here so for now i'm i'm going to keep it a blank because i don't have anything here so hit okay so let's say this is my denver site and uh, for some reason whatever uh, server which i have specified under this references it's not working or it's not responding like like i have a like this is a server i'm, I'm just taking an example this is a server which is uh, which i have specified here and management point distribution point or any of the role is not working properly and the client is looking for 
the management point distribution point or the migration point so in that case if it is not working properly so there is there is something called fallback relationship in fallback relationship you can define if this particular site system or site server is not working then machine will fall back or machine will go for which boundary group so let's say i'm i'm going to say india resource so let's say if my this reference is not working which i have specified here so my machine will go after 120 minutes i can change it any time whatever time i want uh, after 120 minutes to to my uh, india resource to my india distribution point or software update point or management point uh, so i mean you can if you want to if you don't want your client to come for a content like for the distribution point you can say never fall back here if you say for a software update point you can say that as well so that's how you can uh, do the configuration for the fall back group now hit apply okay so that's how we have to create a site assignment boundary group and the resource assignment boundary group and these are the concept which is the, these are the things which are required on every environment do let me know in the comment box if you want me to create the video on any other topic i will i will be creating it for you and thank you for watching